Welcome to Keycloak, the open source identity and access management for modern applications. My name is Alexander Schwartz, and I've been yeah, an IT consultant for, who's been advocating for Keycloak for like eight years, I would say. In 2015, I did, my first pull request for the Keycloak project was accepted. And last year, I joined um, the Keycloak uh, team and Red Hat full-time in January 2022. So this is a 10-minute adventure of what Keycloak can do for you and your project. And uh, well, what can it do for you? It can authenticate and authorize your users for your applications. Um, you can configure it interactively via web UI or fully automated. It can bridge, be a bridge to existing security infrastructures so that you have a modern front end with OpenID Connect and maybe a back end with SAML or LDAP, Active Directory, whatever and hide all that daunting stuff from your, uh, from your new applications. You can extend and customize it as needed. Um, we will see then in a second how we can do this. And you can run it both in the cloud or um, on non-cloud environments. So what does Keycloak do? So it's all about tokens in the end for Keycloak. So you have your user um, that then using a mobile device, using a standard computer, and they want to log into some services in the cloud. They send the first request there, then they get usually a redirect uh, because the user is not authenticated yet, redirected to Keycloak, and Keycloak presents, for example, a logging stream. People put in the username and password, and they receive a token, and then with their token, they can access the services in the cloud. And with a token, the services in the cloud can then ask Keycloak, well, who is that user? What are they allowed to do? roles, groups, permissions, whatever, that's then all provided with that token the application sent to uh, the service. So what's the thing that the user usually sees from Keycloak? Well, it's a logging screen, right? A very standard logging screen. You have a username and a password. Um, and behind that, um, Keycloak could use that username and password and verified using its own database where we so, uh, store all the hashed uh, secrets then. That's one thing to operate it. But if you're then in a real enterprise environment, you usually have a brownfield project, you have an existing infrastructure, maybe you have an LDAP, maybe you have an active directory, maybe you have a legacy application that stores user credentials and user details. Um, you can connect Keycloak to that and Keycloak will hide that from your application. It will be seamlessly integrated um, we have standard integrations for LDAP and Active Directory. If you have a very custom uh, legacy database for your users, then you would need to do some Java programming to integrate it with that uh, user store. And it can do a lot more than just the logging stream. Um, you go into the configuration and say, well, let's add maybe a forgot password um, button to that login screen. And Keycloak comes with a pre-configured flow that once you um, click on that button, you're being asked, well, what's your username? What's your email address? We send out the email, and um, you click on that link, and the usual stuff you know that happens all the time when you forget your password. The same is around, um, you have a new user. They want to register. Um, even that, Keycloak can handle that. So as you see, we're getting a very fully user management out of Keycloak here, and uh, all these daunting things, your application doesn't need to care about it your application will do only the things that are very re re relevant to your business. And you can also integrate with social logins here, like you can log in with GitHub, you can log, uh, log in with uh, Stack Overflow, you can log in with Google. All these um, brokerages also in there as well. Um, you can go even further. So this page intentionally left blank, right? You can skip all your login screen. Um, if you're in an enterprise environment, uh, you're already logged in using Kerberos. And then your application redirects to Keycloak. Keycloak sees, OK, this user already has Kerberos set up. And then creates a token and passes the token to the application. So your applications only need to learn OpenID Connect. And Keycloak will do the translation to Kerberos, whatever you have in your legacy setup. And such a login screen, lo such a login flow, it can be really, really powerful what you can do in a login flow. Um, so between that login, where you put in username and password, and then when you end up in your application, you can put in there numerous steps saying you want to have your users, you force them to configure one-time password generator. 
So Keyclub will make sure that it has one defined, and if it doesn't have one defined, it will ask the user, now it's a good time to set up a uh, one-time password. Uh, the same goes for WebAuthn. Uh, we can also do like a screen in there, uh, confirm the terms and conditions. So um, it can also do that and record these terms and conditions have been confirmed. You update the password because maybe your users um, need to require uh, a password change every now and then. Uh, you want to update your profile. You want to have an email that's verified before you then hand over to the application because the application requires the email to be verified before it wants to send data there. So all these steps, you can put them between the login screen and the application. And there are some building blocks already defined. Some of these are on the list. But you can also build your own um, required actions here. So this is the web front end that the user usually comes into contact with. Um, all this can be administered using a web UI. So this web UI, um, for the administrator, you see here toggle buttons, for example, user registration, enabled, yes or no. Uh, forgot password, yes or no. Remember me functionality, uh, enabled, yes or no. So everything can be explored using a web UI. But then, um, as we're cloud native people, well, we don't only want to have a web UI, right? So you want to have a REST API as well. Uh, it's there, and it's also a command line interface where you can configure these things as needed um, in an automated fashion. Well, there's, that's the UI for the users, but then there's also the UI, f uh, sorry, the UI for the admins, now it's the, admin, the UI for the users. So the users can um, manage their passwords there, they can manage their second factor, um, they can update their user details, all this UI is there. Um, and ready to be used uh, as part of this full user management that's there. And well, as we are here um, with Cloud Native People, well, you, can, you want to have a continuous everything infrastructure. Everything should be scripted. Uh, some call it GitOps. So you can do that by exporting and importing realms. So um, I've done that lots of times in test environments that you want to spin up in multiple instances. You have a full realm exported as JSON and ex imported when you start a new Keycloak instance in the test environment. It's fully set up from that export. But it, you can do it only in a fine grade way that you have a REST API that you add another client, add another user, um, both in the REST API and the command line interface. And of course, there are configuration files, but also CRDs. For example, to set up a new instance of Keycloak using the operator, you fill out a CR like this. Uh, naming like, okay, this is going to be the host name, this is going to be the database you want to connect to, and uh, then you're ready to set up uh, a new Keycloak instance in your environment using an operator. I've been talking about customization quite a lot here. So um, there's a server developer guide that gives you all the details that you need here. So you want to customize the theme, um, for example, to make it really look and have the same look and feel as your company. Um, you want to configure the login flows. Uh, we talked about earlier that, add new required actions. You maybe want to create event listeners. So whenever a new user logs in, you want to have an event fired that's then processed asynchronously in the background. The same when a new user registers. Um, maybe when there's a failed login, all this can be listened to, and you can react on these events in here. Um, especially if you're in an enterprise environment and have this um, an LDAP setup, um, I've seen LDAPs being set up in lots of different ways and flavors. Um, you want to have some mappers of that information so they end up in that token or in the user info endpoint of the OpenID Connect things. So the application can really use this information and you can write your own mappers as needed here. And as I said, you can also connect your custom storage. If it's a database, if it's a REST service, maybe if it's a host, um, your choice, you can connect your custom information to Keycloak here. And to run it in, key, um, in cloud and non-cloud environments, in a, in a non-cloud environment, you download an archive, right? You unzip it, untar it, uh, add a JDK to it, and you are ready to run Keycloak. Um, but of course, if you're in a, an OpenShift, a Kubernetes environment, you use uh, pre-built containers that we provide to you. Uh, you can customize these containers, and we actually encourage you to do so. Uh, you can enhance them, put in your own extensions to this, uh, bake in the configuration so that the container starts faster, and then hand this either the original image or the customized image to the Keycloak operator. So this was the 10-minute tour of Keycloak. Um, 
So we've shown you how you can authenticate and authorize the users for your applications. You can configure Keycloak interactively or fully automated uh, as of your choice. You can have a, it as a bridge to existing security infrastructures and customize and, and extend it as needed. And you can run it on scale, both in cloud and non-cloud environments. There are some links, and I assume that these um, slides will be shared afterwards. And I have some very exclusive postcards for Keycloak and stickers. So grab me uh, in the next break and get some from me. Uh, and have you see you around. Thank you.